Hello my friends. Let's make some strawberry mead. First we have, of course, strawberries. These are out of my garden. Clean off all the green foliage. They're all washed and then they were frozen. So they just come out of the freezer. They're really hard. Uh, what I'll be doing to get them ready to put in the mead is I'm going to add them to a brew bag. In this case, this is a nut milk bag. Actually, here's the, the packaging. Just got them off Amazon. Fairly affordable. They don't let through a whole lot of uh, sediment. I was really happy with the way they work. Uh, I've used this one before. They are reusable. It's a natural fabric. So what I've done because I've used it before is of course I washed it after I used it and uh, sanitized it in sanitizer water using of course uh, what I'll be using to sanitize all my equipment and everything I'm using is uh, star sand. You just follow directions on the packaging and you can't go wrong. So I've sanitized this again still damp from the sanitizer. I'm just going to fill it up with these strawberries my hands are washed, of course, and sanitized. Uh, while they're frozen, it's much easier to handle. Looks like there's a, there's a hair in there or something. So I'm just going to get as many of these into this bag as I can. Of course, as they, uh, as they thaw out, uh, I can fit more. So I'll let you go. I'll shove all these in here and show you the next step. Alright, I got all the... Uh, strawberries to four pounds of frozen strawberries into the bag. I like these. They have the uh, drawstring on them. Now as they thaw out of course they'll take up less space and this isn't going to be uh, isn't going to be a problem in the uh, fermenter. Unless of course you're trying to ferment in a carboy then that may be a problem. Yeah, just get your uh, bag as tight as you can. Make to twist it a bit and then run the strings. Around it. In opposite directions. Now when I tie it, sorry about the awkwardness. Now when I tie it, it's not going to be tying the uh, drawstring part tied, but lower down. And I'm just going to tie it like a shoelace. So it will be easy to untie as these are reusable. Okay, so there it is. Strawberries bagged and ready to go. Just going to move this to the side. Over here, I have draining into my sanitizer bucket. Clean, sanitized two gallon fermenter. This is a perfect example of why I like to use a two gallon fermenter. I can fit the four pounds of strawberries in here, no problem. Now if you're going to use a glass carboy, you'd have to shove each little individual piece of strawberry down through the hole. And if you would use a large amount, like this four pounds here, that's going to, well as you can see, it's pretty much the size of a one gallon glass carboy. So I like to use either a stoneware crock or a fermenting pail. I'm doing a one gallon batch using a two gallon fermenting pail. Okay, so now we have the frozen strawberries. Obviously we're not ready to ferment on, on them yet. We're gonna let them uh, thaw out to room temperature. So what I'll do here now is add some water and some pectic enzyme. I'll grab the water. Alright, 
So for this, I normally just use spring water. This is actually distilled water. It's perfectly fine. It will work just great. All right, so got the frozen strawberries in there. I'm just going to add some water. It's going to speed up the strawberries thawing out to room temperature, which is where I'll want it when I'm adding my yeast. So this is approximately a gallon. It's four liters of uh, water. You can use any water you like, even chlorinated water. But a word of warning with the chlorinated water, just uh, let it sit for 24 hours and the chlorine will evaporate. Some people also suggest boiling it and letting it cool back down before using it, but letting it sit is really effortless. So again, four liters of spring water, or in this case I used distilled water, which is fine. You can re use uh, reverse osmosis water, it's fine. The only water you don't want to be using is a, a very hard water. So, I see a hair or something in there. All right, now this is gonna sit in here and thaw out. And while that's doing its thing, I'm going to add one half teaspoon of pectic enzyme. This is gonna ha help uh, prevent uh, pectin haze and it will help extract the juices from the full fruit. So for that, I'm just going to add a quarter teaspoon, I think it said, don't oh, half a teaspoon, I apologize, I have to find one. Of course I didn't have one ready for the video. This is a one teaspoon, I'm just going to approximate with the pectic enzyme, if you put a little too much in, that's all right. If you're making uh, wine or mead from a jam, definitely double up on it. If you're using a fruit that's high in pectin, like apples or pears, uh, I recommend doubling up the recommended dose. Or if you're adding it late in your ferment, alcohol does affect its effectiveness. So double up the recommended dose if you're adding it post ferment to help clear. But uh, it's best use used prior to fermentation. So it's recommended to add it one hour before adding the yeast. You can add it up to 24 hours. Um, like in this case, these are frozen and probably sit for a few hours. It'll be perfectly fine. Nothing's gonna grow on here. But this would be a good time if you are in a practice using Camden tablets. Toss in your Camden tablet, throw the lid on it. It will also help sanitize everything. Uh, that's a little trick a lot of people don't know is you can use Camden tablets to sanitize your equipment. But again, pectic enzyme, strawberries. It's going to sit in a gallon of water or four liters of water until they're thawed out at room temperature. And I will add the honey and the yeast for the next step. All right, before we go any further, I'm gonna start my uh, yeast. I'm gonna make a yeast starter. And all that is, is I got a small bowl. I warmed up some water. It's 35 degrees Celsius right now. I just measured it. And for the yeast, I'll be using the Lalvin RC212. The directions for its use are on the back. Each package has directions. This yeast is uh, what would be used to make, say, a Zinfidel wine. And strawberry mead, Zinfidel wine, I don't know in my mind. Tell me if I'm wrong. But uh, this will help retain the color and uh, should do very nicely in my uh, strawberry mead. This is a five gram package. I'm only going to use half of it, so two and a half grams for one gallon uh, batch is more than enough. You can use the whole package if you like, but it's unnecessary. I'm just going to put in about half the package. 
a little bit more. The idea here is just so the yeast will rehydrate and start uh, their yeast activities all together in a fair sized colony. So when I add this to the must, when I add this to the mead, uh, nothing else will compete with it and uh, should get off to a running start. So I'll put the unused portion, I just fold it over. I'm going to replace this into the fridge, refrigerator. I have a Tupperware container I keep my yeast in. Okay, so this should sit for about half an hour or so. So by the time I finish doing everything else, the yeast should be ready to go. Uh, so now all that's left is I'm going to add the honey and uh, any additives. Take a hydrometer reading, add the yeast, and uh, let it get to work on its own. So I'll be right back with the honey and the hydrometer. All right, now you got your yeast started. That's sitting off to the side. Takes 20 minutes, half an hour, and it should be uh, ready to go. You can just sprinkle it in too. You see lots of people doing that. That's fine. I don't like doing that. I like to get an established uh, colony. Put the whole thing in and it will take off like wildfire. Alright so here's the strawberries. They were simply the frozen strawberries you saw me put into a brew bag. In my case I'm using a nut milk bag. I covered that with a gallon of water. Added half a teaspoon of pectic enzyme and this has sat overnight in my garage. It's winter time. It's nice and cool in there. Might as well be the refrigerator. You can also put it in the refrigerator. If you're going to leave it for a long period of time, like I did, overnight or 24 hours or something, uh, I would recommend refrigerating it. Um, depending on where you live and what, what temperature your room temperature is, uh, you may be growing stuff before you even get started. So if you're not using Camden tablets, like I don't like using uh, any preservatives or chemicals like that in it. Um, they do have their uses and I will use it. I'll show you how to use it but not in something like this. Alright, so all we have here is the uh, bag strawberries and a gallon of water. Uh, you can see from the nice coloration that pectic enzyme is working, doing its job, which is excellent and that's why I put it in there and let it sit. Okay, to this I'll be adding some citric acid. I will be adding a quarter teaspoon of citric acid. Why am I adding citric acid? I'm adding citric acid is predominant acid in a ripe strawberry. And since we are diluting the strawberries with water, we are also diluting the acid to sugar ratio so, to make up for that, I'm going to be adding a quarter teaspoon. So that was two. This is an eighth teaspoon measuring. I added uh, two of those, making a quarter teaspoon of, again, citric acid. You can use a fresh lemon if you like. I prefer to use just a citric acid and you don't get the other flavors as you would from, say, you know, what makes a lemon taste different than a lime or a lime tastes different than a grapefruit or a orange right they're all citrus they're all full of citric acid and they will all work if added to a wine or mead uh, but you will get those extra flavors okay I am also going to add one eighth of a teaspoon of wine tannin powder this is also an antioxidant this is made from the skin and stems of grapes this is to be added in your primary fermentation. This is a different sort of tannin than you get from aging on wood or adding oak chips or even an oak tannin powder that comes in a powder. Alright, so this looks like coffee grounds. Looks like it won't mix in, but it will. It'll be fine. 
So also is an antioxidant, so it'll help uh, preserve your wine right from the start. It's a very helpful ingredient. It'll also add to the overall uh, full bodiness and mouthfeel of your wine when it is finished, or in this case your meat, I'm sorry. Alright, so we've added acid and tannin right in the primary, okay, no worries. Now, the reason I added a small amount of acid, a quarter teaspoon, so that leaves me room to adjust it to my personal preference before bottling. And I won't go so far in this video because everything past the point I get uh, by the time I'm done this video is going to be personal pre preference. Okay, How long you age it, whether you back sweeten it, how much you, how much, uh, what sweetener you use, how much you use, etc., uh, etc. Et right? That's all going to be your personal preference. And what I do is not going to be as helpful as what you want to do to get what you need done. All right. So this is a strawberry mead. I'm not shooting for a high alcohol by volume. Hoping somewhere around 10 or 11 percent would be fine. This is my honey for my honeybees. It's wildflower honey. It's actually a mixture. I have a pound of 2022 harvest and a pound and a half of 2021, I believe, or 2020. But as you can see, it's not crystallized. It looks like this because this is raw, natural beekeeper's honey. Right? My bees were not fed any sugar while they were make, producing honey. They weren't, uh, no antibiotics. This is all organic, natural beekeeper. This is not the honey you get at Walmart. Okay? As you can see, it's not run through the fine mesh filters of commercial honey, so it's still full of pollen and uh, tiny particles of wax. It will come out um, after a couple rackings it doesn't affect the clarity of your finished product. Okay, this is two and a half pounds of honey to one gallon of water. Should give me approximate, I'd say, oh, so that'd be, uh, so each pound is 0 0.35 of gravity. So two would be 0 0.70 and three should be just over 0 0.90 or 3 yeah listen to my math another half pound I meant so I'm gonna add all this so you can see it's going right in there it's running it just looks different because again it didn't come out of a package it didn't come out of a, a bottle because in fact, uh, I'm the person, or one of the people I should say, that uh, put the honey in the uh, in the packaging, right? Okay. Safety seal still on. I put this in here. I put my label on it, and you buy this at the farmer's market or off the shelf somewhere. It's also reason why you won't be seeing me add any yeast nutrition, yeast nutrient, because all the nutrition they need is here in the honey. Okay, so I've got acid, tannin, and I've added the honey. My tannin's all stuck to the bag. It would be a lot easier if I had mixed the honey and water before adding it but because the strawberries were frozen I knew they would have to sit for quite a while I didn't want too much sugar in the water to feed anything that might want to start growing all right well this will be torture to watch as I try to stir this and everything sticks to the bag so I'll bring you back once it's all stirred in and I'm taking a gravity reading Alright, I got all the honey stirred into the solution. As you can see, it's got a really nice red color. 
Now that's from the peptic enzyme. It's drawn out the, all the juices and all the color out of the uh, strawberries. That's also why I'm using the RC212 uh, yeast. So they want to retain that color. It's a subtle color after fermentation. So I would like a nice, you know, strawberry colored strawberry meat, right? Okay, so now <clears throat> everything mixed together. I'm going to take a hydrometer reading. So here I have my hydrometer in a graduated cylinder or just a plastic cylinder. And I'm going to draw out a sample. This is uh, food grade acid resistant stainless steel. It's turkey baster. A wine thief would be better. Okay, so I'm just going to fill this up. Don't worry about getting air in there. It's fine. So I'm just drawing a sample out. We're going to take a gravity reading. That's going to tell me my potential alcohol by volume. Okay. I'm just going to put this over in the sink. Alright, well it's floating, so there's definitely sugar in there. So I was shooting for 1.090, and it looks like it has given me 1.084 is my starting gravity. So that should come in between uh, 10 and 11 percent alcohol. So this has all been sanitized. The sample can go right back into the must. The hydrometer and the cylinder I'm going to rinse off before returning to the sanitizer water just to keep stuff out of the sanitizer water. Okay, so everything's in there. I've taken a gravity reading. I should write it down before I forget it. I can always check the tape. <laughs> tape. You have to be old to know what tape is, right? Okay, so everything's in there. Now all I have left to do is add the yeast, which has been sitting about half an hour. You can see, I don't know how well you can see, there's uh, foam collecting on top of the water, so they're already breathing and bubbling, so that's a good sign. I'm just going to stir that up, pour it into my must. That's it. You can stir it in if you like, doesn't make a difference. I'm going to be shaking, shaking up this uh, pail or opening the lid and stirring it for the first four or five days. So everything will be mixed in there well. Serves no purpose on spreading the yeast out when they're young like that. Okay, so got my sanitized fermenter lid. I'm going to seal that on there. Make sure it's good and sealed. Now all we have to do is add the airlock and we're good to go. Again, everything I'm using sanitized with the star sand. And most of it, until I use it, I just leave in the star sand. Uh, it's good to drain off any excess sanitizer though. Your carboys or your pails and such. I always let them drain before I use them. They're getting on your hands or 
few drops here and there get in your in your must is no problem. <clears throat> All right. So what I'll be using here is a three-piece airlock. Make sure your hands are clean before you're touching the pieces that go inside. And uh, also, what I'm going to do here. Put it in. Last time I did this, it sucked it right through. So let's see if it does it again. All right. So filling a airlock with liquid. You can use uh, spirit like vodka or whiskey or something, whatever you have on hand. For primary fermentations, I just add, uh, I like to add sanitizer water. It's only going to sit in there for a short period of time. If it were secondary or I'm aging, I would, uh, well, I do use vodka just because if you leave water as it evaporates, any uh, you know, uh, soluble uh, minerals and such will stain up the inside of your plastics. It, it's not a big deal, but vodka is uh, much cleaner, much better solvent for those sort of things, and doesn't leave your leave your stuff <clears throat> stained. So there, I just filled the uh, airlock to the line hard to see on these clear ones but there is a line fill it to the line it's not sucking back in so everything's good all right also with the sanitizer it makes lots of bubbles and it's fun to watch otherwise you don't see much in a pail okay so this is uh, day two of the fermentation uh, everything's in there everything's mixed up I've taken a hydrometer reading I know what kind of uh, alcohol by volume to expect if it uh, ferments dry. So I'll be watching this for action in the airlock over the next day or so and I'll be lifting up the pail, swirling it around, make sure everything's well mixed in there over the next four or five days. So I'll bring you back, show you if there's any action in the airlock. And yeah, that's about it. That's how you start to meet up. All right, here's the airlock. This is the day after pitching the yeast. So from today, next three or four days, I'll just be lifting the uh, primary fermenter uh, gently and giving it a swirl to make sure everything's mixed in there. And after four or five days, I won't even be doing that so that uh, everything can settle, give it some time few days up to a week to settle before I rack off into my secondary that way I can leave the most uh, mess but yeah there's the airlock it's a few bubbles nothing too exciting with the sanitizer water it does make foam so shake it up and uh, <clears throat> you'll get lots of bubbles but yeah I'll bring you back when fermentation is finished and show you what to do All right, we're at uh, day 11, and uh, the activity in the airlock has pretty much ceased. I've removed the airlock, and I've loosened the lid. I have a sanitized one-gallon glass carboy ready to go. If this has finished fermenting, I'm going to rack into this. I have my hydrometer and uh, cylinder. So now I'm just going to take a hydrometer reading. Again, I have a turkey baster here. A wine thief would be much better. Uh, this is uh, <clears throat> stainless steel, acid resistant, food grade. So let's take a look, see what we have. Just going to put the lid aside for now. The bag's floated up to the top. Oh, we got some. Uh, off gas and some bubbles happening. Oh, it's beautiful. Smells like strawberries. So I'm just going to take a sample here. 
fill up my cylinder. Yeah, it smells are very nice. Doesn't hurt that I uh, really enjoy strawberries, so of course I think it smells nice. Okay, it's not floating yet. Oh, I always put some air in there. Okay. Alright, so it looks like she has finished fermenting. It is just below one. So, yeah. just below one point zero zero zero. Well, as far as I'm concerned, that's finished. Might be a slight bit more uh, action to go. That's why you call it secondary fermentation. Alright, so there's the hydrometer reading. I believe I started, what was it, 1.08 two or zero eight four something in there uh, should be between a ten and eleven percent I'll check the charts whatever's in the title of the video will be the uh, accurate alcohol of this recipe all right so now I got this bag all right soaked lots of juice in it I have a strainer with a you can sit on the lid lip I'm just going to pull this out. My hands again have been washed and sanitized. I'm going to scoop that out of there. It's not going to sit above the juices. Now, looks like I have a lot of juice in there. You can squeeze this. No problem. Whatever small amount of air you're getting in here, it doesn't, it's not going to affect anything negatively. As you're careful, you don't go crazy with it. I don't know how I can get it on camera, but well, yeah, between the pectic enzyme and just the activity of the fermentation, uh, it's really reduced the strawberries in volume, and I have, I'm afraid more than more than a gallon of wine here or mead sorry okay so I'm gonna have to I'm just gonna take this out no not concerned about getting every little bit but there'll be flavor in here too at the that out of the way. Clean my hands off and the sanitizer again. Ooh. Whenever you're working with the meads and the wines, make sure you have a bucket of sanitizer. Always comes in handy. Okay, so I'm going to rack this over. I got my uh, one glass one gallon glass carb boy ready to go sanitized it's been draining off there is some bubbles in it okay I just fold up a rag and put it under the corner of my fermenter that way when I get near the bottom 
and get as much liquid as possible and leave the sediment. Okay. Okay, so all the, these bubbles are from the sanitizer. As I fill this, the liquid will push these bubbles up and out the uh, spout. Now I'm using a gravity siphon. So I put a towel on the floor, I put the glass carboy on the towel. There's the siphon I'm using. Sorry. It's got a pump. This part goes into the mead. It's the empty end. And getting the camera. This part goes right to the bottom of the container you're racking into. You want it right in the bottom because you don't want it cascading down, waterfall, getting air interaction. Okay, so you just take this. Give it one or two quick pumps, and it's away to the races. Now if you have a large volume like I do here, there's more than a gallon, I've just gone ahead and uh, grabbed some mason jars. So anything left over from filling up my uh, gallon carboy. I'll put in the mason jars. I have a large one here. Might as well get ready. It looks like I'll need it. But yeah, this is uh, one of the reasons I use a pail or a crock. A larger than a one gallon container to start to ferment. That way I'm always guaranteed to get a gallon of liquid uh, into my secondary. And then depending on how many racks it takes to clear, uh, that's more bottles of mead in the end. Oops, spilled some on the floor. Well, it looks like I'm going to get a... And have that one container sanitized. And quite a bit out of this. This recipe is more like a gallon and a half by the looks of it. And that should be good there. Oh. Well, a little bit of meat everywhere. Alright. Let me just get my mess here. Uh, I overflowed container. Yeah, so I got a gallon and almost another half gallon. Gallon plus two quarts. All right, I'm going to taste this here and see if it even tastes like strawberries. And I get some of this run down into that.
Hmm, interesting. All right, so the uh, meat is traveling the wrong direction in the tube to get a taste. There we go. Dripping it everywhere. It's a disaster video. Okay, let's get rinsed off. All right, it was cloudy after I was messing with it. Mmm, definitely taste the strawberry. Yeah, tastes like strawberry. Uh, tastes like not quite ripe strawberry or something. Different taste. Doesn't taste bad, doesn't taste great. And as you can see it's not clear or anything. This I'll just toss out. It's all the yeast. Make a loaf of strawberry bread with it or something. But yeah, so that'll get tossed outside. Okay, I made a label. I just put the month. The day doesn't really ma matter much to me because this is going to sit in age for well, up to a year. There's a gallon plus a quart. I think this is 750 milliliter mason jar. So, <clears throat> pretty good volume of liquid out of it. So now when I'm racking this one, again as it clears, any head space I lose, I can fill with either of these. And to store these, I'm simply going to put lids on them sanitized. I just get these uh, plastic lids for mason jars. Reusable, washable. Okay, so I'm going to store these just in a cupboard with my other preserves. And the trick here, just gonna finger tighten it and then back off just like maybe a quarter of an inch. Alright, finger tighten it, just back off a quarter of an inch. Not even, just till you feel it loosened. That way, if there is any gas escaping, it will escape and not uh, explode the bottle or anything. But I checked the hydrometer. The sugar has been fermented. Not much is going on. Some CO2 is left coming out with the bubbles, but uh, very little. I didn't notice any in the cylinder when I was taking a hydrometer reading, and that's where you usually see the bubbles, which can affect your reading too. So it's very good, successful ferment. Tastes like strawberries, probably taste uh, better uh, with age and some back sweetening. Uh, I wouldn't say it's drinkable now, but uh, so now all that's left to do is I am going to dry the inside of this very well. When I have this filled right up, there's very maybe an inch of head space there.
All right, just grabbing my uh, airlock and bung out of the sanitizer. Okay, so the trick to keeping these stuck into your carboy is after you've sanitized it, take it with a clean paper towel or a clean cloth make sure it's really good and dry. You want this surface dry and you want the inside of the carboy's bung hole to be dry also. That way you get good friction and the bung should stay in the hole. Also do not assemble do not assemble the airlock to the bung before putting it in. Put the bung in separately. Once the bung is in there to your satisfaction, then put in the airlock. The airlock will push and expand that bung helping to seal it or force it right out. So, seams do not have moved. Getting a good seal. Put the airlock back together. Something got on the outside of it there. Okay, so in primary I just used the sanitizer water. This is going to sit for a few months. I'm going to use vodka. Again, I'm just going to fill it to the line. It's about halfway. It's hard to see the line, but uh, it's there. Okay, that's it. Now, all you need is just the cheapest, the cheapest vodka you can get. This is local vodka. Good price, good clean, neutral flavor. Nothing, it won't get into the meat anyways. But it will keep everything out of it. And it'll last, and uh, the only difference between uh, vodka and water in the airlock is the water will always have some minerals in it, and it will stain up your plastic as it evaporates, and the vodka will not do that. So there you go, there's some uh, strawberry mead. I'll set up a better shot, you get a better view of it. Alright, here's the meat in a little better light. This is going to be stored in a cool dark place. As the sediment falls out, I'm going to rack it over. Uh, it all depends on how much sediment comes out, as to how many times I rack it, and how long it sits aging. But generally speaking, two or three more racks, and sits for about a year. If you found any of this interesting or helpful, please consider subscribing. I'm always happy to make new friends here on the channel. Hope you have yourself a great day, wherever you are, whenever you watch this. Peace!